Now, I stopped watching Doctor Who even before he grew a pair of tits, and I certainly didn't give a fuck that David Tennant was returning to play the character, but that was until I saw this gem on Twitter. Evening, boys. And once I had stopped laughing at how fucking ridiculous that was, I decided to watch the 60th anniversary special, and fuck me is it shit. It continues to spit in the face of both the Doctor and all of his fans, as it repeats the same mistakes that have destroyed Doctor Who's popularity. You know, stupid shit like lecturing the audience instead of trying to entertain them, being painfully unfunny, being poorly written with massive amounts of contrivances, and worst of all, trying to pander to people who don't even like the franchise. 60 minutes ago, I was this really brilliant woman. Now, the Doctor has regenerated back into his previous form, which has never been done before, and considering David Tennant's iconic final words, I don't want to go. What exactly must he be feeling like now that he has returned to this version of himself? Well, instead of taking this opportunity to explore the Doctor's feelings, it turns out he doesn't really give a shit, and the show mostly glosses over it as nothing more than some mystery box bullshit. What a fucking waste of an opportunity this is. The Doctor should have been portrayed as being emotionally torn at getting a second chance, and yet every time we see him, he looks like he couldn't give two shit about being able to return to how he was. He also keeps making the point that he doesn't want Donna to remember him, otherwise she will die, but he does an absolutely shit job in trying to hide from her. He doesn't even put on a mask or try to conceal his face. No, he outright says dumb shit like he has two hearts right in front of Donna. Are you fucking retarded? Donna is pretty annoying all special. She either mocks the doctor, keeps repeating herself, or gets angry at anyone for misgendering her son. Speaking of which, her son is now a chick with a dick who goes by the name of Rose, as his original name was Jason, which isn't interesting at all. But what is interesting about it is how stupid Russell T. Davis is in thinking that it's a big deal. In the video showing behind the scenes of the show, he makes a point about the name Jason meaning healer or doctor, and that Donna has subconsciously named her own son after the doctor. But the problem he has unintentionally made is that Jason no longer goes by Jason anymore. He goes by Rose, and calling Rose by the name Jason is considered an insult otherwise known as deadnaming. So in a meta sort of sense, the character Rose has chosen to bury the memory and any attachment she has to the Doctor for which she was named after. This plan is so perfect, it's retarded. Well, I've put it off long enough, so now I'm going to break down the plot. It starts with an incredibly rushed meeting between the Doctor and Donna before a spaceship crashes into the ground. He then gets a taxi to the crash site, which is luckily driven by Donna's husband, who can answer all of the Doctor's questions. Oh, how convenient! Apparently, she gave away all of the lottery money that the Doctor had left for her to charity, and now they can barely make rent. I just hope it was a good charity, and not one that did unsavory things like Oxfam. So the doctor sneaks into the facility and ends up having a chat with a woman who I call Wheels for obvious reasons. She is in charge of the operation and she tells the doctor that an escape pod had shot off from the ship before it landed and it's near Donna's house. We then cut to Donna walking home with her gender confused son and a bunch of boys cycle past calling Rose by her real name Jason. Rose is upset because she has been misgendered, but she really shouldn't be, as this is the UK and those boys will probably go to prison for that. You're exaggerating. Only a little bit, that's the messed up thing. Her grandmother also commits the wicked crime of misgendering Rose when she wonders if it's now sexist to call Rose gorgeous when she didn't use that word to describe Jason. Oh my god, who the hell cares? Afterwards, Rose finds a giant fairy alien in a nearby alleyway, which looks like a giant tarsier, and it says that it was being chased by evil aliens that look like giant humanoid ants before crashing down. So after hearing all of this, the chick with a dick decides to take the fairy back home. Meanwhile, back at the crash site, we see that Wheels cannot make it up to the top floor of the factory to investigate the ship, because of course she's in a wheelchair. Oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. Ah! 
<laughs> Why is she inside the building? There is no wheelchair access anywhere. This is fucking retarded. So anyway, she sends her men to investigate the ship, but they end up getting brainwashed by a strange purple light inside the vessel, which obviously means that the fairy is clearly the villain and the ants are the good guys. We then cut to the Doctor who arrives at Donna's home and in what could have been a very nice moment where the Doctor fondly remembers Wilf, getting emotional thinking that he is dead, the moment is immediately undercut by turning the whole thing into a joke. I love that man. I'm so sorry for your loss. He's not dead, you idiot. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. The mother is a fucking bitch for calling the doctor an idiot. He genuinely thought that his friend had died as he hadn't seen him for years and was getting all upset about it, you fucking heartless monster. Anyway, the doctor tries to talk to the fairy but is interrupted by the chick with a dick who lectures him on addressing the monster without using the correct pronouns. So after that bullshit is over with, they are interrupted by both the brainwashed guards and the ants who just start firing at each other. Trapped in the living room, the doctor makes a bulletproof shield with his sonic screwdriver because that's apparently a thing he can do now, allowing everyone to run upstairs into the attic before crossing over into their neighbor's house and exiting through the front door before escaping in a taxi. He then drives to an empty car park, pulls out a judge's wig and teleports the Ann people to him because that too is yet another ability that he has now. So the doctor begins a makeshift trial to confirm what we already know, that this little fairy is evil. The doctor is fully aware that this little shit is the real villain and yet despite knowing this he doesn't take any precautions at all, like boxing him in with his shields or scanning him to check for weaponry. Nope, he just assumes that the fairy is going to be no danger at all. So of course, the doctor ends up being wrong, because why wouldn't he be? And the fairy pulls out a gun, killing the two other ant people. Well, good going, stupid! The group gets taken hostage and the fairy brings them all the way to his ship, but it's not the doctor who comes to the rescue. Oh no, it's Wheels and her weaponized wheelchair that is able to shoot out rockets, who ends up saving everyone. What the fuck am I watching? The Doctor and Donna end up on the ship, but are separated by a glass door that cuts the ship in half. Why the fuck would anyone have this on their ship? What purpose does it serve? Well, there isn't one. It's just that the writers couldn't think of a logical reason for the Doctor to willingly restore Donna's memories, so they have invented this contrived nonsense to force it to happen. That's so fucking lazy. Donna gets her memories back and stops the ship from destroying London, but collapses from doing so. She is about to die, but luckily for her, she ends up getting saved by her daughter, who just so happens to have a penis. Apparently, Miss Man is just as smart as Donna is when she has her Time Lord mind, because they somehow share my... It doesn't matter. But what does matter is that Rose is non-binary. I don't know how the fuck that's relevant either. But don't worry, I'm sure that this explanation will clear any questions that you may have. Because the Doctor's male and female. And neither. And more. What the hell does that even mean? So they stop the fairy and save the day, but of course Donna and her daughter, who just so happens to have a penis, have to mock the doctor one more time for being a man. Is it a shame you're not a woman anymore? Because she'd have understood. Go fuck yourself. Before going on to cure themselves of whatever time bullshit they are suffering from, Donna decides to go on a trip with the doctor, but accidentally spills coffee on the TARDIS and it just explodes. Jesus Christ, where the fuck was the TARDIS made? China? Well, we all know the real reason as to why the TARDIS had caught fire, because once again, the writers needed a contrived reason for them to go to another location for the next episode. And that's the end of this special. That was terrible. This special was an embarrassing, preachy, contrived piece of shit mess that just proves what everybody already knows, which is that Doctor Who is dead. The writers are more interested in playing identity politics and lecturing the audience rather than telling a good story, which is why most of the episode is people crying about either being called the wrong pronoun or being misgendered. There's two more specials after this and there is no doubt in my mind that they will be just as poorly written and as preachy as this Ted was because the writers are shit at their jobs. Anyway, that was the 60th anniversary special of Doctor Who. It was a piece of shit. <laughs>